Would I be wrong if I divorced my husband after the death of our child? My husband Liam, 39 male, and I, 36 female, have been married for 11 years, together for 15. A couple of years ago, our little bundle of joy, our six-year-old daughter, was snatched away from us in a car accident, in which Liam was driving. I was at home when I had received a call from the hospital. Liam was in the ICU for a month while I received the terrible news of the death of our daughter who died on the spot. He went into shock when he heard the news. Ever since then, Liam has completely withdrawn from me. He took off all the pictures which contained our daughter, turned her room into a study, and pretended as if our daughter never existed. I knew he was grieving. Many times, I had heard him silently weeping in our daughter's room. I tried to get him to therapy or for us to go to counseling, but he had shut down my offer every single time and goes in rage whenever I mention it. He yells, he breaks things, and storms off and doesn't come back home for a couple of days, leaving me worried sick. He barely comes home nowadays, completely avoids me, and rejects my every attempt for comfort. Once, when I tried to make him understand that this wasn't what our daughter would have wanted, he completely lost it. Smashed a flower pot against the wall and told me to go f*** myself, or better, die and never come back. Liam was never like this. He was a very sweet, calm, and patient man and loved our daughter to death, so much so that her first word was, Dada. I still love him, but I miss our daughter too. I need some comfort too. Neither of us have any siblings and our close friends are in different countries. Liam is no contact with his mother while his father had passed shortly after the birth of our daughter. My parents tried to comfort me as much as they could. They told me to be patient with him, to help him get back to his feet, but I'm tired. I tried everything. Before, we used to share the household chores, but now I have completely taken them on myself so that he can grieve in peace. I cook his favorite meals, which he throws away without even taking a single bite. The last straw was a couple of months ago when I had told him if he doesn't go into therapy, I'd file for a divorce. He coldly smiled at me and thanked me for showing him my true colors. He told me to go ahead with the divorce since I seemed so eager to ditch him. I feel guilty, horrible, and completely useless, but I just can't go on like this any longer. Should I give him more time? Would things get better? Would I be the asshole if I leave him now when I'm supposed to be comforting him? So this is why I do not scroll on my For You page. Like I don't, I spend a lot of my time on TikTok, but most of it is posting. I am not scrolling and watching shit. Tell me you guys seen that video where the young lady was laughing about how her sister has her entire family blocked. She's no contact with the family, but this girl has the people that she's dating look her sister up so she can send her messages. I feel like this is so fucking weird and inappropriate because no contact is done simply because you are no longer healthy for me. Your presence in my life is not what I need right now. So I am I'm distancing myself from my family, from the people that are bothering me, that are causing me any type of pain, either be it emotional, physical, mental. Like that's the reason people go no contact. I don't know. I, I watched that video and it just gave me an ick from beginning to end. Girlfriend says that she's caught up in a generalization in her family and that's why she's part of the, the no contact ordeal. And it's like, are you sure that it's not because of your own fucking actions? Our behavior is the only thing in the world that we are able to actually control. Your sister did not like what was going on around her or what was being done to her. So she decided to take control and change it the only way that she could possibly do that. And that was by going no contact, by cutting off the people who are hurting her, be it em mentally, emotionally, physically, whichever way, she took action and she decided to change that. And instead of respecting that and looking internally and seeing like, what were the reasons why she cut no contact? I'm going to stop her instead. Are you fucking kidding me? Even though we only know a little bit of what was told in the story, you know, in the video and what, based, whatever questions girlfriend has answered, if she's decided to answer any. But I'm going to say that I truly feel like there is a reason why you were included in this no contact ordeal. There has to be a reason because from the outside looking in, it seems like you have an issue with boundaries. If somebody went no contact with me, the last thing I'm going to do is stalk them from the page of every person that I've ever dated. Like, I think that is extremely weird. Also, what about the fact of like the horror stories that we hear on here all the time about me, men being strange in women's DMs on their social media? And now you are literally putting effort into scaring your sister. Like you are sending her cryptic ass stalker messages from random profiles from random Instagrams of people she does not know. You can't tell me that you're doing that because you wanna make sure she knows that you love her so much because if you did, you would let her know who you were. I miss you, haven't seen you in so long, dot, dot, dot. Like, that's weird as fuck.
That's weird as hell. Like, you can't tell me that you're not doing this to inflict pain on your sister purposely. Like, I, I won't believe anything different. Would I be in the wrong for leaving my wife when we're trying to get pregnant? I'm 32 and my wife, 30 female, has 12 siblings and they all have a few kids. She's the only one without children. When I met her, her family always joked that she'd never have kids because she didn't want them. She was eternally the world's best aunt. This almost ended our relationship early, but she informed me that she could take them or leave them. It's just never been a priority and something that she did actively avoid. After a year of dating, she told me that I was the kind of man she could give babies to because she felt comfortable knowing that I would be there for her. Her family is all across the south from Florida to Louisiana. My family is small and nestled against the Great Lake. Two years ago, a year into our marriage, I asked her if we could move closer to my family because my parents weren't doing well. She agreed but said that she didn't want to start a family there because it's very cold and very hard on her body. We would have to send the kids to private school for either of us to feel safe or like they were getting an education. And all her hobbies need to be warm weather and water. She'll only be able to participate in them at most three months out of the year here. I agreed because all of that was reasonable. Well, we've been here for two years and the cold hasn't been that hard on her body. But because of the water conditions and pollution, she actually gets to participate in her hobbies less than anticipated. My father passed away, and my mom isn't doing great, but I have fallen in love with getting to be an uncle to my nieces. I've never lived around them before, but it's the best, and I feel really guilty leaving my sisters after my parents are gone. My wife and I are trying for a baby, and we're actually waiting to see if it took this time. I admitted to her that I want to stay, but would be willing to retire south. She, however, did not take it well. We fought to the point that she said if I wanted to stay so bad, I could have the kid and we could stay, and she'd pay child support in summers. Now my head is swimming. Would I be in the wrong for breaking it off or at least asking for separation? Am I the asshole for canceling a check of $12,000 that I wrote for my infertile friend for her IVF over a joke? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I, female 35, am infertile. My ex-husband and I tried everything to have kids, but it just never happened. He divorced me, went and married someone younger who was able to give him a kid, and from what I've heard, they're expecting their second child together. It hurts so much seeing someone else have what I couldn't. I get frustrated with myself sometimes and with family blaming me for basically everything. I turn on my friends for support, especially Alicia. She's in the same infertile boat as me, but currently her and her husband are trying IVF, hoping it will work. Alicia asked me for help to pay for her upcoming IVF cycle. I agreed to write her a check of $12,000. I really wanted to help her and the money came with no strings attached. I wrote the check and gave it to her last week. She was very appreciative of it. The very next day, I got a sudden message from a mutual friend, Carol, with a screenshot of a conversation she had with Alicia. Turns out she and Alicia were talking about the next IVF cycle. Am I the asshole for canceling a check of $12,000 that I wrote for my infertile friend for her IVF over a joke? Disclaimer, this is not my story. Carol and Alicia were talking about the next IVF cycle and Alicia said she hoped the cycle would work because she didn't want to end up divorced and having her husband go marry someone younger and have a baby with them and another on the way while she's alone at home without a family at 35. Alicia is 32. I was stunned in her. I knew she was talking about me. I didn't confront her about it. I simply contacted my bank and canceled the check. That afternoon, Alicia called me to ask why I canceled the check and I told her. She went crazy saying she didn't mean it that way and she thought that it was somewhat an inside joke between desperate and fertile women. She came over with her husband the next day begging I write another check but I refused. An argument started her husband thought I wasn't being supportive of her like when she was supporting me through my struggles. She left crying and we haven't talked since. Her husband keeps reminding me of the date of the next cycle saying they can't have it after I took the money that was supposed to pay for it back. Some friends think I'm being oversensitive but Carol's on my side. Am I wrong for ruining the family gathering over a joke that my sister made? I swear stories like this really make me wonder if they're even real. Because what? For some context, I, 28 male, and my wife, Claire, 25 female, are expecting. Claire is 8 months pregnant and our son is expected to be born November 2023, but this isn't our first pregnancy. Claire got pregnant two years ago, but the day our daughter was born, she passed away, and this crushed us both mentally, especially my wife. Well, I have a sister, Hannah, 19 female, who for better words, lacks empathy. Our parents always try to defend her and try to say she has a dark sense of humor, but this time she took it way too far. We were at a family gathering yesterday and everything was fine until the topic of pregnancy came up. Everybody was asking how Claire was and some of the females like my mom, aunt, and grandmother were asking about the birthing plan. That's what my sister says while laughing. Let's hope this baby isn't like the last. Am I wrong for ruining the family gathering over a joke my sister made? That's what my sister says. Let's hope the baby isn't like the last. Talking about mine and Claire's daughter that we lost. I completely lost it and started screaming at Hannah, telling her she was completely rude. And if she ever says anything like that again, she wouldn't be able to ever see our son. That's when Hannah started crying while Claire, my wife, was already crying. 
That's when my dad took me away from my sister and I got yelled at for making Hannah cry over a joke as he called it and ruining the gathering. I will admit it was harsh threatening not to let Hannah see my son, but this isn't the first time she made a joke like that. I'm not gonna lie, I think if a family member said that to me and my wife, I would quite literally never talk to them again. And because no one else in the family stepped up, I might isolate myself from them as well. And it's not even like they just didn't step in, the dad literally took up for the sister, so. And the comment literally made my stomach hurt. My husband shaved my head. Me, 31 female, and husband, 30 male, have been married for three years and together for five years before getting married. Mm. We've always had a healthy, harmonious relationship, or so I thought, and welcomed our daughter three months ago. Yesterday morning, we were getting ready in the bathroom. My husband was shaving next to me while I was brushing my teeth. Out of nowhere, he takes the electric razor and runs it through my head, mm. shaving a part of my hair just above my forehead. First, I thought he was pretending to do it, but then I saw a big chunk of my hair falling into the sink. I didn't get a complete bald spot, but the damage is clearly visible. It's important to know that I've always had long hair reaching to the mid of my back. Never cut it short, never alone got a buzz cut. My husband likes my long hair too, and never told me to get a different haircut. I totally freaked out and started crying and yelling at him while he was laughing. He told me it was just a prank and how it wasn't a big deal, it's just hair and that I could grow back again. We had a serious fight afterwards, and in the end, he did apologize, admitting that he was the asshole, but still insisting that it was a prank and it was funny, at least to him. No. Although he apologized, I still cannot forgive him. I will either need to wear a hat or a scarf, or brush my hair over, or get bangs, which I normally wouldn't do due to my face shape, to cover the damaged area. It will take years to grow up my hair again to its current length, However, what I'm most concerned about is that he still insists that it was funny. I just don't get why he would laugh at my misery. It seems Stressed. borderline sadistic and abusive to me. I'm also afraid that he would do something like this to me again in the future or even to our daughter because he finds it funny. I don't think I will ever be able to forgive or trust him and I'm seriously considering getting a divorce. On the other hand, he's never done anything like this before. It seems totally out of character. He isn't a prankster and has never made fun of me. Neither did we have any marital problems nor big fights, not even after the birth of our daughter. Until I make up my mind, I don't want to talk to my friends or family about this, as I don't want to be pressured into deciding either way or being judged if I don't take their advice. Should I stay with him or divorce him over this? Am I wrong for taking the wrong kitten on purpose? I, 31 female, recently went and got a kitten with my husband, 32 male. The seller had five identical black kittens, and despite wanting a girl one, they only had a boy one left. Three girls, two boys. Ready to collect in two weeks. Because it's so hard to purchase cats these days, I decided to settle with the boy and gave a deposit for him. The seller called a week ago saying the cat was available to collect, and when we arrived, all five kittens were still there. The seller looked at the genders and handed me a boy, then left the room to go grab some cat food she was going to give us. While she was gone, I got the idea to switch the boy cat with one of the girls, so my husband quickly found a girl one. We put her in the carrier and put the boy back with the rest, and when the seller came back with the food, she didn't realize they were switched. We took the kitten and the food and left without her knowing what we did and left to go back home. A couple of hours later, I got a call from her asking if she gave me a girl cat by mistake. I lied and pretended to check and said he was definitely a boy and she apologized saying she must have got the genders wrong and told me the buyer wanting a girl was refusing to have the boy cat. I told her I was sorry that happened and reassured her it was an easy mistake to make. I casually mentioned what we did to a coworker last night, telling her I managed to get a girl after switching them and she wasn't impressed. She said that I shouldn't have switched them and that it was wrong to mess with the seller and buyer like that because I made someone wait two weeks for nothing and I made the seller struggle selling it. I told her it was no big deal because the person who wanted the girl cat could look elsewhere and this way the boy cat can go to a loving home. She still wasn't happy with me so I told her gender doesn't matter for a cat and that sometimes you have to look out for yourself in life. Today I came home to the office and everyone was acting differently around me, being cold and trying to spend as little time around me as possible. I overheard someone telling a coworker what I did and they seemed really disgusted with me, but I don't understand how doing something so insignificant has made everyone so angry. This woman is beyond like, how do you not understand? You just said gender doesn't matter. You just said it shouldn't matter. Why did you care so much? You stole, that's theft. I don't know why you thought anyone would be like, oh yeah. Good job. Like No one would ever think that way. I asked my husband if he felt guilty for doing it, and he reassured me that I shouldn't feel bad about him. 
I looked on the seller's profile and saw that the boy cat had been purchased, so she didn't struggle to sell him. I do feel a bit guilty for switching the cat, and everyone at work seems to be pretty irritated with me, so I feel like maybe I was wrong and I shouldn't have switched them. Am I the asshole for switching the cats on purpose? My ex-wife keeps asking me to be part of her kid's life, but won't compensate me for my contributions. How can I get her to stop? She's 29 and I'm 32. My ex-wife and I split last June. The court battle was messy and she ended up taking full custody of our two kids. The whole ordeal was getting very drawn out and ridiculous, so I ended up giving her what she wanted. A couple months later, she's blowing up my phone demanding that I still continue to be part of her kids' lives. I told her that since she wanted full custody, she can deal with raising them herself. But the fact that she keeps trying to manipulate me to pull her weight when she legally has full custody feels like a slap in the face. After numerous texts, calls, and even emails, I blocked her on everything. She ended up driving an hour plus to my mother's house to beg her to get me to spend time with the kids, saying stuff like since the kids are young, they need the influence of both parents in their lives. If only she thought about that before getting full custody. She keeps saying that I won't have to contribute financially, which isn't the problem because we both have well-paying jobs, but that she wants me to take them out to eat or something or visit. Like that would even make a difference. It's still work to drive all the way out there to mess around with stuff that isn't even my responsibility anymore. I told her over a phone call that if she wants me to expend that much effort and time when I'm already busy, then she needs to compensate me financially. Like I said, the money isn't the issue here. I just feel like if I'm going to have to play the role of father when I don't even have partial custody, then I shouldn't be doing it for free. It's not my job anymore. That much she's made clear. I'm getting so tired of all the mess and the constant harassment via phone call and text. I just want her to leave me alone. I think she's seriously having trouble living with her decisions. How can I resolve the situation? Legally, it should be resolved. But how can I stop her from trying to manipulate me? Am I the asshole for telling my mom to spend money on a tutor for her favorite daughter? because I won't be helping my sister. My parents had me 16 female and my sister 14 female. We lost our dad a few years ago. My mom has heavily favored my sister since she was born to the point that she's raised my sister to be a pretty shitty person to be around. At least she is to me. My dad noticed it and he called my mom out and at some point they did therapy. Apparently it came to light that the grandmother my mom named me after was a person my mom had a lot of resentment towards. Why she named me after her, I will never really know. She claimed that she didn't realize it at the time, but she at least has some resentment towards me because of that. She also has some PPD when I was born, and she claimed the early months with me were a very dark time. Whenever we fight, she takes my sister's side regardless of what happens. My sister takes food off of my plate, she won't get in trouble. If I yell at her for it, I get punished. If I take food off my sister's plate in return, I get punished. My sister takes something from my room, nothing is said. I bang on her door after she's locked it to try and get it back. I'm punished for harassing my sister and making noise. I tell my mom about this stuff happening. She says sometimes about learning how to share or how my sister's the baby or that my sister needs it more, so I need to let it go. She's 14 fucking years old. What do you mean? There's nothing baby about her. She's fucking 14. My sister loves to gloat that my mom loves her more. My sister has told me that mom has told her she loves her but tolerates me. My sister told me my mom wishes that I had passed instead of my dad. She told me they talk about that kind of stuff. She also told me after my dad died, mom pulled all the money from my college savings account and put it into hers. Absolutely not. I would not be helping my sister at all. At all, because even though mom is doing this, your sister is actively playing her part. She knows exactly what's going on. She's no hell no. I wouldn't help her either. She starts, you gonna fail out of every fucking thing. Don't come to me because I don't know the subject that you want me to help you with. Nope. Nope. My sister also lies to my mom and claims that I do stuff when she feels like I didn't get in enough trouble recently. In June, she got me grounded for the whole month. She broke her laptop and claimed that I had done it. She knew it would be believable too because I resented my mom for buying my sister a brand new gaming laptop while I had to buy a really cheap secondhand one myself with money from my birthday and Christmas. Mom didn't even let me say anything and my sister gloated that my mom will always believe her over me. It came to my mom's attention a few months ago that my sister is struggling in school. She's got a couple of places that she can't just seem to catch up on, but I've always had good grades. I could even graduate early in theory if my school offered that, but they don't. My mom is aware of this from past years. She told me a couple weeks ago that I need to start tutoring my sister before she gets into a hole she can't climb out of. That's her fucking problem. If she focused more of her attention and time on her goddamn schoolwork versus trying to torture her sister, she wouldn't be failing so many fucking classes. Her bad. I told my mom I won't be helping my sister. 
My mom told me that I will, and it's my duty to help her. And wrong. It's not. It's not. No. You ask your older child, will you help your sister? No. Okay. Then you move on. You hire a fucking tutor. Your child is, your older child is not responsible for anything for your younger child. Any of you guys that have multiple fucking kids and feel like your older children are required or like they're supposed to help with their younger siblings, you're 100% wrong. You are wrong. They did not have children. It is not their responsibility to help with any fucking thing. I don't give a damn if they know the subject or not. If they don't fucking want to, it is up to you as the parent to look for another source. It's not up to your fucking children. I told my mom to spend money on a tutor for her favorite daughter because I won't be doing a thing to help either of them with this. I told her they don't deserve my help. My mom asked, how could I put my sister's future at risk? I shrugged. Mom called me names and slammed a door when she left me. The tension is high because of this and my sister is loving it. Am I the asshole? Absolutely not. You're not the asshole because why would you go out of your way, create more work for you to help someone who's clearly not going to appreciate it? Absolutely not. They don't deserve it. Just like you said, they do not deserve any of your help. Bro, I wouldn't put it past your sister to fail classes on purpose. I wouldn't. I would not put it past your sister to fail classes on purpose because she knew your mom was going to demand that you help her and you weren't going to want to. Like, I 100% feel like that's something that she would fucking do just to get you in trouble even more. Honestly, who's to say that your sister would, you know, still not flunk the class on purpose just to get you in trouble later on down the line? Like, your sister, I believe she will 100% throw an entire class away just to make sure that it gets you in fucking trouble. Who's to say that she's actually going to sit and listen while you're trying to teach her something? Absolutely the fuck not. If you guys had papers and books spread out all across the table and your mom walked into the room and your sister told your mom, that you weren't helping her your mom would 100 believe her regardless of what the fuck her eyes see regardless of what is showing that you're actually trying to do something if it's a lose-lose situation regardless at least be on the losing side where you're not creating work for yourself hi i'm a 36 year old married muslim woman with two children i have a boy and a girl my girl's six months old it has been a year and I've had a very strong crush on another man who I believe is also married. We have never spoke, but see each other every day as our children go to the same school. I didn't think anything of it at the beginning. However, I have such strong attraction to him, which just seems to be getting stronger. And the day I don't see him, I feel very low. I know this is extremely wrong on all levels. However, when I try to avoid seeing him, I seem to coincidentally end up bumping into him in other places. I am sure he knows I have this attraction towards him as I always catch him looking back at me. I really don't know what to do. I feel very guilty to the core as this is very unfair to my husband. I have tried keeping myself busier than usual to avoid thinking of him. I pray five times a day and make dua to Allah to make my feeling towards this man just disappear. But it's not happening. Please, can you advise? Unfortunately, given the nature of my problem, I feel like I can't speak to anyone about this at all. Am I the butt face for telling my girlfriend she embarrasses me? My girlfriend Amber and I have a good relationship overall. Personality-wise, we get along great. Hobby-wise, it's a very big difference. <laughs> she doesn't like knitting like I do. Yeah. And that's embarrassing that's to me. Embarrassing. What the fuck? Before I start off, I know I'm going to get the, oh, then why should, would you be with her? And I ask myself this too at times. What are you talking about? But I just love her as a person. She just dot 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 embarrasses me. What? Okay. Amber is into old things. She dresses every day like it is 1969. She wears clothes that are crazy in colors and patterns and just overall not what people wear today. Her friends, along with other people our age, early 20s, all dress in recent style clothes and pants. Amber does not. Okay. Uh, I, 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 yeah, wow, who cares? what a crime. <laughs> wow. How embarrassing. How terrible God. for you. Yeah. One day she wore this vest with a patterned shirt underneath and 70s looking pants at the store. That sounds cool. As we were walking, just, people just kept dot dot staring i really gotta emphasize the punctuation sometimes because it's really fucking it's, it's it's a lot it made me uncomfortable because in their head they are probably like quote whoa 
<laughs> is that is this chick confused on the year? Question mark. End quote. <laughs> Am I right, fellas? <laughs> fellas? Oh. This is a tight five at the comedy store. They're we gotta... probably thinking, dang, she looks cool. Yeah. That's what I would think. Yeah, I think that too, yeah. Yeah. Amber only listens to music older than my grandmother. Cool. This causes a disconnect with my friends, my friends. They will ask her who she likes to listen to, and she will speak of a name that nobody has heard about. She does like more, quote, popular older bands, sh such as The Beatles, The Doors, and Jimi Hendrix. I've never heard of The Beatles before. But it is very rare that people our age listen to that. Listen, I think maybe it's not super okay, maybe common. maybe not The Beatles. I know a lot of people don't like The Beatles However, anymore. However, I can't... Jimi Hendrix? I can't escape the internet without people talking about Jimi Hendrix, and sometimes The Doors. Yeah, there are a lot of people love The Doors. Yeah. The fuck? Her apartment is all old. <laughs> it's all old. I'm gonna emphasize caps all old. Oh my god. She has antiques of 70s ads, old color wall, orange color wallpapers, Ooh. couch rugs, and it just looks like a grandmother's house. <laughs> Sounds awesome. She has old quote pinup posters of Ooh. half naked ladies. That sounds epic. She's embarrassing. Pinup shit is so interesting. I love pinup poses and shit like that. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous it art. Is cool. Yeah, yeah. One day she asked me if I wanted to invite my friends because her friends were coming for a party. Politely, I declined. But then she started to ask why. I told her that I am embarrassed of her house. Into most of the popula into most of the population, it is weird. I don't. IDK. I talked to my friends about the, and, and my friends, and they said they would feel the same way. How about you? I don't want to seem like an a hole, but I don't know. I, I don't know how I can bring this up to her and ask maybe if we can find a compromise. You know, it's so interesting that you think that your girlfriend is embarrassing you because actually, what's <laughs> you're happening? Embarrassing yourself. Well, you're not cool enough. You're for not her. cool. She's cooler than you. That's what's happening. Yeah. My 20 female girlfriend of two years told me the music that I, 25 male, play during is weird and a major turnoff. A little backstory. When I first started having I researched into ways to be better as I was a little stiff and pretty much had no idea what I was doing. I read online that you can play music and match the rhythm in order to put on a better performance. I searched songs and started slowly creating a playlist in which I was comfortable matching the rhythm. There are a few songs to my playlist, however, there is one song in particular which actually happens to be my favorite that my girlfriend hates and says turns her off in a major way. I don't understand why it has taken her two years to tell me she hates that song. It's a good song with good rhythm. I feel the way I fucked up is I could have possibly asked her previously if she likes the playlist or any songs she'd like to add or change, but to leave it for two years thinking our life is great, but in her eyes has just been ruined by my music has left the whole situation feeling awkward and I'm a bit annoyed. I pretty much played this tune every single time, so the amount of times she must have not been enjoying it when I thought the complete opposite is annoying, but also embarrassing in ways. Not to mention my previous partners. However, they never complained about the song, so maybe it's just her. It's fucked up the relationship, to be honest, because it feels awkward now. The other day, we were having with no music, but I was still to the tune playing in my head. She recognized this and asked me to stop. I thought this song was perfect, and I always along with the tune and feel it gives me the perfect rhythm for doing the deed, too. I usually to the song and find it devastating. She hates the song. Are you ready to hear it? No, I can't imagine <laughs> listening to that ever. The top comment on the YouTube for this song. A moment of silence for that poor woman suffering two years of this. Please help me get my girl back. Oh, oh guy! Uh-huh. Wow. That's actually true. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Okay. We'll see what we can do. Uh, what did you do? Yeah, what did you do to what deserve did you do? Since I know she's a listener, I hope she realized this dilemma is about her. Yeah. And, and maybe get the hint. Basically, I messed up. We're both 26 now, but we met back in sixth form. And back then, I knew she was the one. But I didn't believe that my teenage self could be right about that kind of thing. When we started uni, we lost contact and it was completely my fault. She's always been shy, so she was more focused on her studies, but took time to be a supportive friend, always reaching out and making sure I was good. I, on the other hand, was hmm. busy, ignoring messages, hmm. partying all the time, hmm. trying to be the big man, hmm. talking to as many girls as possible. Hey. 
And I'm deeply ashamed to say I let a good friend down. Wow. Um, I thought there was hope when we randomly ended up running into each other a couple years back. So I should have taken the chance to rekindle things then. But the guilt and the shame of how we basically broke up during uni ate me up. Mm. I blew it by airing her messages when she would ask to meet up, even though I had suggested it. After that incident, I suspected. I suspect she blocked me on all socials for like a year. Mm. However, recently her stories have been popping up again. Mm. And after a bit of digging, she seems to be single. But I need to know, should I go after my girl? And if she hears this, please DM me. Am I the asshole for telling my soon-to-be ex-husband that he can't spend our money on his girlfriend? So, about a month and a half ago, my 32 female husband, 37 male, texted me and told me he didn't know about us. Then called later that night to say he wanted a divorce, that he wasn't happy. The very next day, he went to her 23 female house. And he's been there pretty much ever since. We have three kids, 12 male, 6 female, 1 male. I have been a stay-at-home mom the last year and a half to be with our youngest and because of... So, this has left me scrambling, trying to wean our son, find childcare, get a job by myself. My ex is staying over an hour away with her. We have pretty much no savings and he's still paying the bills here until I can find a job and childcare. Now, I've had callbacks about jobs, but every daycare I have contacted is full. All of them. Not one excepting one-year-old. My ex is spending hundreds of dollars on this girl. He takes her out to eat buys her things, they go to bars. Also, let me say, a month before he told me he was leaving us, we were looking at houses, planning to move. The kids and I were blindsided. We didn't fight a lot. He works third shift, so the most we argued about was he didn't spend enough time with the kids. But we didn't have a bad marriage. I cooked, cleaned, took care of all the child care and household duties. I paid bills. He worked and slept. Anyway, I've been telling him not to spend our money on her. I need to be able to afford to get my son into daycare if I'm going to get a job. But now all he says is that it's his money and I can get a job, which I'm trying. And he's no help. I can't do anything without someone to watch my one-year-old. But I've told him that it's our money until those papers are signed or until I can get a job. He's calling me petty, jealous, an asshole. But I think he's the one being unreasonable. He practically abandoned our children. He only sees them because I lost it, because our children are having breakdowns and don't understand why he doesn't want to be with us. And I was irritated. I put them in therapy. Anyways, am I the asshole for telling my ex that he can't spend our money on his new girlfriend until we're divorced or I have a job? Or am I just an entitled app? Edit. I'm doing some more shopping for lawyers and I'm going to look into other resources. I'm not going to listen to my ex anymore. I'm going to apply for low rent housing and food stamps until I can get back on my feet. He told me not to. It's so nice to hear that I'm not the app. I feel like I'm in the right, but others have been letting me know otherwise. So thank you again. I contacted a lawyer and found out that I should still be okay even without a job for a while and that he will have to pay child support and spousal support whenever that gets established. Lawyer said paperwork will be ready earlier this next week. We got our stimulus, he took less than half, but was supposed to use that money to find a place and get things for the kids for his new place. And he went and blew $1,000 in 24 hours on her, not a cent on our children. I used a thousand of my stimulus money to pay for the divorce that he asked for. I can't stand how selfish he is. I'm disgusted. I knew I had to file so I could make sure I could take care of my kids. He doesn't seem to care about them at all. Am I the asshole for laughing at a child-free woman wanting to be a housewife? So I've been online dating for quite a while. My profile very clearly states, I'm dating with marriage as the end goal. I matched a few weeks ago with a charming woman who said she was also dating with the intent to get married with the caveat of wanting a traditional relationship where she would be a housewife. I agree that I would be happy with that arrangement in the future. We chat about a variety of subjects and set up a date for an early dinner two weeks out. Much to my surprise, during the date, she casually mentions she doesn't want children. In my confusion, I ask her, but you said you were looking to become a housewife and she responds you can be a housewife and still not want children admittedly i did chuckle but it wasn't a big one she took great offense to my laugh and asks why can't she be child free and a housewife my response was what will you be doing all day and she says what do all the housewives do after their children go off on their own usually go back to work i told her it's going to be next to impossible to find a man willing to take that deal and she gets angry and leaves am i the asshole 
I'm the bad guy for not letting the passenger in front of me recline their seat on a flight. I'm around 6'5", or 196 centimeters, but my legs are long. And normally, I purchase economy seats because I have no issue being uncomfortable for a while, especially on shorter flights. I also should mention I never try to intrude on other people around me. Last week, I was on a four-hour international flight with my knees crammed in the seat in front of me. The passenger directly in front of me tried to recline, but realized my knees were preventing her from doing so. She turned around and gave me a dirty look and attempted to recline again with even more force. I was a little annoyed, but I apologized and told her I could not move my legs out of the way without in going into the space of others. He accused me of doing this on purpose because I wanted more room for myself and calling me the a-hole and saying if I cannot fit into normal economy plane seats that I should pay extra for an emergency seat so that everyone around me can have more free space. Context, no, I did not see if the flight in particular had extra emergency seats. Like I said, I usually do not find the need to. I also do not run into issues very often. Am I the bad guy here? Should I pay extra? People can recline their seat. Crime Fanatic Friday Part 2, The Black Dahlia Cold Case. A man strongly believes that his father is the murderer in the 70-year-old Black Dahlia cold case. Shortly after his father's death in 1999, a now-retired LAPD detective, Steve Hodel, was going through his dad's belongings when he noticed two photos of a woman who bore striking resemblance to the 22-year-old victim Elizabeth Short. That's when he began to investigate his own deceased father. He went through countless testimonies, archives, and witness interviews from the case. He also had a handwriting expert compare samples of his father's writing to the writing on some of the notes that were sent to the press from the alleged killer. The analysis found a strong possibility that his father's handwriting matched, but the results were not conclusive. The Black Dahlia crime scene photos show that Short's body had been cut in a manner consistent with hemocorporectomy, a medical procedure that spices the body underneath the lumbar spine. Hodel's father had been a doctor who attended medical school where this procedure was taught in the 1930s. Hodel also found a folder in his father's archives at UCLA with receipts for contracting work on his childhood home, dated a few days before the murder for a large bag of concrete, the same brand and size found near Short's body. Body. Hodel fact-checked the 2003 best-selling book, Black Dahlia Avenger, A True Story, against the official police files and found his father, George Hodel, to be on the list of the six main suspects that LABD had investigated. He was in fact so suspicious that they had bugged his home in 1950 to monitor his activities. An audio statement recorded, at 8.25 p.m., woman screamed. Woman screamed again. It should be noted that the woman was not heard before the scream. Then, later that day, George Hodel was over her telling someone, realized there was nothing I could do, put a pillow over her head and cover her with a blanket. Expired 1259. They thought there was something fishy. Anyway, now they may have figured it out. Killed her. Supposing I did kill Black Dahlia. They couldn't prove it now. They can't talk to my secretary anymore because she's dead. Even after this shocking revelation, hinting that he killed the Black Dahlia and also his secretary, the Black Dahlia case still hasn't been officially closed. 22 year old girl has a boyfriend that is 24 years old and they've been together for four years they were supposed to get married during year two but she said they didn't because of something with his job she didn't really ever meet his parents know what he does um just you know basically knew nothing about him anyway five months ago she got accepted into like an exchange student program so she flew into the united states I don't really know where she's from here. She doesn't say, but she flew in for a semester to New York. She said it was a really big cultural shock for her, um, especially escaping from like very controlling parents back home. Had a very hard time making friends. So before she knew it, she was, you know, dressing shorter, um, going out, clubbing, drinking, and doing all the hat on things. She said her and her boyfriend eventually broke up um, not because of like dressing shorter and going out and drinking and like her freedom. It was more because she didn't give him the time of day that she once used to. Fast forward, it was Halloween. She said that she had been sickened with herself and decided that Halloween day was going to be the last day that she goes out. Um, and she decided to go all out and go home with somebody that day. A few days later, she keeps getting phone calls and multiple texts from her ex. He tells her and convinces her that he knows everything that she's done. Um, he's, you know, seen the clothes she wears. He has footage and proof of, like, her encounter with a person and that she needs to come clean and that he'll forgive her. So, naturally, she eventually caved in told him everything, which made him even more angry. Within a couple of days, she was able to find out, I don't know how, that he had access to her Apple ID, her location, um, had somehow set up cameras in her dorm room, I don't know how, had 10 people following her from the minute she stepped outside this, to the city. Um, he had both 
Put it low. I lost my words. He had video footage of everything. And she found out that he was extremely wealthy, had business in the States as well. Um, as Dubai and Russia, he has committed tons of crimes. And she doesn't even know his real name. She said that he proved that he really does have all this, like, access to her locations and stuff. Because, like, one time he made her leave a dining hall. She didn't tell him she was there. And he knew she was there. Um, and she had to walk home. And he knew every stop she made on the walk home. And it was, like, a 50-minute walk or whatever. Anyway, she somehow gathered a bunch of, like, like confirmation that he really is this horrible human. He's threatened her multiple times, so she's back with him now because he's threatened to ruin her if she doesn't. And then her parents are also in danger if she doesn't. And that's, you know, what she says. And then she says she, so she's been home for two months now. She does regret her actions and choices, but she's confused because he's okay with me now ever since I've apologized for everything but he says that I am worthless and selfish and insults me but we had been broken up and if none of this would have happened we were done he takes it as if I cheated on him and I'm just confused I'm supposed to marry this man and I feel like I know nothing about him you don't and he's totally gaslighting you lying to you and scaring you like he sees that you're scared he has you on a chokehold he wants to ruin your life let him you're gonna ruin your life by marrying him i'd prefer let him just whatever he's got on you let him do whatever he wants and let ola take care of him and you fix yourself up pick yourself up and own up to your actions if they do eventually come out but I think that if you stand up to him and you show him that you're not scared he's just gonna buzz off go no contact change your number change your apple id change your entire freaking phone um all of it just go completely no contact I do not think this guy is as powerful as he's making you feel that he is but he sees that you're like believing it and that you're scared because you were doing things that are wrong that you don't want anyone to know about so that's my thought on it. am i an asshole for yelling at my husband for making my daughter feel bad disclaimer this is not my story my oldest daughter may is 16 she has a job and has had it for about five months out of all of our children she's the most mature she's also good at saving but she rarely spends money on things she enjoys and instead keeps it in her bank account my husband wanted to have her start paying her phone bill immediately. It would be $50 a month, but I said no and eventually compromised to the beginning of October. My husband is her stepfather and is very money tight and he tells her to pay for everything she wants. Now, I agree with this somewhat as she should be responsible so she's ready for college, but he wants her to pay for everything. Anytime she asks for something, he'll respond with, you have money, buy it yourself. Now, fast forward to today, May has been out of town on a trip with her class and she was going to be gone for a week. Because this is a national event that happens every year and they're in the city, everything is very expensive. She has a credit card under her name that is connected to my account and I said she could use it for her meals. Am I the asshole for yelling at my husband for making my daughter feel bad? Disclaimer, this is not my story. She has a credit card under her name that is connected to my account and I said she could use it for her meals but snacks and souvenirs she would have to buy on her own. She called earlier and we were talking while my husband was in the room. She started complaining about how expensive everything was and joked about being bankrupt when she returned from her trip. I told her not to worry about it and said that she could use her credit card for whatever. My husband says, stop guilt tripping your mother to give you money. Whatever you want, you can buy yourself. She was quiet and said she wasn't asking for anything. He then repeated, don't guilt trip your mother. How can you be morally okay with that? She said she wasn't calling to ask for money, that she wanted to complain and that she was going to hang up. I took her off speaker to tell her that it was fine and she swore up and down that she wasn't trying to guilt trip me and that she was going to pretend the call never happened and that it was fine and then she hung up. I was so mad I yelled at him and told him that he was being ridiculous and that she was still a child. I left before he could respond and my daughter's been apologizing to me every time she buys a meal because she thinks it's too much. Am I the asshole for telling my wife we can adopt her nephews but not her niece? Dang. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think it's gotta that, be a package deal. Yeah, it's gotta be a package deal. <laughs> My wife's sister was recently found guilty of dealing to support her habit. She'll be sentenced next week and is looking towards a long term because this is not her first time caught dealing. She has three children, two boys, four and five, and a girl, 14. No one on her family side wants to or is in the position to take the children, except for me and my wife. However, I'm demanding two conditions. If we're going to take the children in, I want us to adopt them. I don't want 50 people looking over our shoulder trying to tell us what to do. If we're going to be legally responsible for them, I want to be able to parent them as we see fit. The second condition is that I'm willing to take the two boys but not the girl. The two boys have not had any rules in their life and are terrors, but they're still young and can be taught right from wrong. The girl has gone past the point of no return. She's been suspended from school several times for things like fighting and smoking illegal substances on school grounds. She's also stolen from us and other family members. She's dating a gang member who was arrested on a home invasion charge, but was released because it was his first time and of his age. This is a mess, and we've been arguing about it for an entire week. I don't want to risk our financial and personal security, but my wife argued that we can't just throw her away. At this point, we're not even sleeping in the same bed, but I'm hesitant to open our house up to the girl and her lifestyle. My wife argues that if we don't take her in, she'll go into foster care, but I pointed out that if we don't take any of them in, they'll all go into foster care. Um, And then there's an update and a top comment, but I'll read the top comment first. As a social worker for CPS, cautious no assholes here. But you need to tread carefully because your demands may not line up with reality. Four and five year olds raised in a chaotic and traumatizing environment will absolutely have some behavioral problems, which you are relating to running wild. That may not be as easy to fix. They'll need extensive therapy. Whether you adopt them or not will not be up to you. You can ask it, but you won't be able to demand it nor expect it. It will be the choice of the judge based on how much or how little the parents comply with CPS requirements, how long the prison term is, etc. I would expect that you would be fostering the kids for a minimum of 12 months before you're allowed to start the adoption process, depending on where you live. And yes, the courts and social workers will be up your ass during that time and six months after the adoption takes place. You need to think about that as a reality before committing to these kids. Signing adoption papers as soon as they come to your home will not be an option unless both parents agree and clear it with a judge, lawyers, and psych evals, etc. It just won't happen that way. Where I disagree with most Redditors, though, is about taking in the 14-year-old being inappropriate. If you do not feel like you can care for her, you shouldn't. But that shouldn't stop you from being a resource for the two kids that you're capable of protecting. I've been a long-term foster parent for children of friends and family, and I've done short-term foster care for kids in my office anywhere from newborn to 17. A 14-year-old with gang affiliation, substance use, major trauma, and behavioral concerns is not something most people with good intentions are equipped for. You can't just love and therapy all those issues away. This kid sounds like she needs a higher level of care than you are equipped for. So you aren't wrong for recognizing that you can't give her what she needs. She needs an experienced parent with trauma-enforced skills and a ton of one-on-one attention. You aren't an asshole for having this boundary and understanding your limitations, and any social worker would tell you that. But be prepared that taking the boys will not be as easy as you imagine, and you will not be able to demand adoption. And if you take them, it will be a trial run, heavily supervised, and maybe adoption happens later. Reconsider your plans based on that knowledge and decide if you're still willing and call your social worker. You may not be interested at all once you see what the plan will look like. So that was the top comment. Mm. 10,000 upvotes. Update. Um, I left out a lot of info because I was in shock and still am. We're both in our late 20s. We've been married for a little over two years, have no kids, and I just graduated with my advanced degree last year. Last month, we were talking about maybe having kids when we were in our mid-30s and about where we want to go on our Christmas vacation. Last week, my wife came home, sat me down, and told me that we're taking in three kids. I know nothing about adoption laws, CPS, or anything related to raising children, much less troubled children. I knew what was going on with her sister and was told my wife's parents were going to take the kids in. Apparently, they decided they're too old to take care of three kids. Of everyone in her family, we are the most financially secure and have a house, so when everyone backed out, she volunteered without asking me. That was the crux of our argument until I realized that it was happening with or without my agreement. 
That's when I told her that we can take the boys, but not the girls, which started another round of arguments. I have never raised any kids, so I know I can't deal with the baggage that the girl will bring into our lives. I can't begin to tell you all how shocking the whole thing is. Sometimes I feel like I'm outside, watching my life spin out of control. But I want to thank you for all of your insights, and especially but, 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 which was the social worker, mm -hmm. um, and the people working in CPS and or the legal system. Your advice is extremely helpful story time my wife and i have been married for five years but our relationship began when i was 23 and she was 13 part three she immediately began to apologize apparently i had a very concerned look on my face i remember saying some nonsense about student and teacher relationships and that i was too old for her or she would meet someone her own age soon but to my surprise i had enjoyed it very much but I was feeling very guilty about the whole thing. I told myself I should have kept our relationship more professional. I don't think anyone can really say there was anything unhealthy about it. Going against my instincts, I brought myself to acknowledge my feelings for her. At our next lesson, I told her that I was in fact attracted to her and willing to see if we can get away with it and told her I was attracted to her. I remember considering why society looks down on the whole thing and i agree with that concerning principles someone at that age is too easy to manipulate and can often be too scared to speak up when they feel uncomfortable i didn't want to harm her and knew that in having a relationship with her the risk was high so i told her that she had complete power over where things went if at any moment she wanted out all she had to do was tell me. We continued with our lessons. After a while, we would take advantage of the time alone to fool around a bit in her room. She went to high school and then into college. We started openly dating. We married soon after she had finished university. We both find it romantic now. Never had a fetish for a younger woman, but that is our story. My wife and I have been married for five years, but our relationship began when I was 23 and she was 13, part two. One day towards the end of the school year, Lily and her mother came and found me after school to ask if I could tutor Lily privately. As I needed the money and Lily was so fun to teach, I accepted and we began classes that summer. Over the next year, I seemed to become part of the family. Besides simply tutoring Lily, they would invite me out to dinners, short outings around the city, and so on. At first, it was overwhelming, and I tried to politely decline their invitations, as it seemed to surpass what would be appropriate under most circumstances. But they were relentless. Her parents trusted me in almost absolute. I must have been charismatic at that age. They would occasionally be absent during our lessons, so Lily and I spent in a fair amount of time alone. We would mostly stick to the material I prepared, but sometimes we would both get bored with it and talk casually naturally. We became close and comfortable with one another. Months went by and I started feeling a strong connection with her. We bonded over many things like painting, music, novels, and attitudes towards life. Her entire outlook was beyond her age. At first, I told myself it was sort of elderly, brother's care that I was feeling, or a fatherly instinct, but I was clearly in denial that I could be attracted to someone so young. One evening we got on the topic of cooking, she had never learned to cook anything before, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to teach her vocabulary for a new setting. We went to the kitchen and I taught her how to make scrambled eggs. She was doing a poor job of stirring, so I tried to take the spatula away from her. But she insisted on doing it herself, so I stood behind her and guided her hand in the proper motion. Then, spatula still in hand, and for no reason other than that we were particularly close to each other, she turned around in my arms and kissed me deeply. I was too shocked to do anything, and I just accepted it. We stood like that for a few more seconds, kissing slowly. Then I came to and pulled away. She apologized. Go to part three. Am I wrong for not wanting to split the bill with my girlfriend, 1,200 pounds, when she accidentally poisoned our dog with grapes? 
So my girlfriend and I recently got a rescue dog and everything's been going well. Getting his vaccines, neutering, etc. And all the bills have been split 50-50. He's still uninsured as we do have one vaccine left and until that point, all treatments need to be paid cash. Well, yesterday I got home from work and my partner wanted to show me the dog's newest favorite treat, grapes. I was shocked to say the least. So off to the emergency vets we go. The treatment we got for him were gold standard to reduce the risk of long-term impact on his liver and kidneys. However, this costed 1,200 pounds. I do believe she made a genuine mistake, but the way I see it, it's Dog Ownership 101, and she's a dog person. And she's had dogs her whole life. It just makes me sick that I have to pay 600 pounds for her feeding our dog three grapes. So am I wrong for asking her to pay the entire bill as this was her mistake? Top comment says, if you agreed 50-50, you should pay half end of story. It's so weird to me because so many people are like pro grapes when it comes to dogs, but it literally is so toxic. I know so many friends and family members that give their dogs grapes and even have tried to give my dogs grapes. And it's just like a big thing people don't know. I don't care if you fed your dogs grapes their whole life. Parents were able to pay full college tuition for the three kids with no loans. Mm. I was dead middle class and graduated my state uni with about 40k in loans. Her grandma was a lovely woman who died with a decent amount of wealth. She asked about my monthly payment. I said I have just under 50 grand and was hoping that the forgiveness would go through. In the last year, she redid her will. She slipped in 50 grand to pay off my loans. We always had fun convos, but it was a big shock to me. This is life changing for me. My girlfriend got an equal share as her siblings and her mom came down to about 60 grand each. A couple of her siblings are married and they thought it was unfair that collectively my GF and I got more than them or more than her parents. Throughout the three days at her parents' house, they spent lots of time urging me to give it back to be split up between the rest of them. My girlfriend is kind of caught in the middle and at first had my back, but now thinks I should do it just to keep the peace. I really don't want to though. AITA. I mean, if you were truly honoring your grandma, you would say that's what grandma wanted. Yeah, that's what she Who wanted. are we? That was her will, meaning her desire. Hi, I'm 24 years old. This is not really a story, but more of a question. How is it that all these American influencer marriages are so easy and American marriages in general are easy, but Arab marriages are difficult? I'm going to start off by saying I highly doubt any marriage is easy, period. It's not. Coming from someone who's been married for 11 years, marriage in general is just not easy. It doesn't matter where you are from or what religion you are. Adding to that, if you are fully devoted to your marriage, then it's not easy. Like if you are communicating, working through your problems, you're fully devoting everything in you to your marriage, it's not easy. Anyone I know can tell you it's not easy. I am literally best friends, cousins, and sisters with a counselor, a therapist. Um, she's Muslim, but she counsels, like, you know, non-Muslim couples. And everybody's got their problems. What your question kind of implies is that you're kind of looking at the outside picture. No one's life is perfect, and no one is going to post their fights for you online it's easy for them to put up a little camera and record their dinners and their day in the life and their valentine's dates and their the roses she got and the chocolates and the this and the that but they're not going to sit there in the middle of a fight and press the record button for you and then post it for the world to see it's just a natural thing no one is going to post their problems online for you so there's that part. Now, your next question was, American marriages are easy, but Arabs are difficult. So Arab men are actually a little more difficult to deal with. And that's just because of like the way we were raised and the way they were raised. Now, I'm not saying this is everybody. I'm just generalizing that most Middle Eastern men grow up to not have to show emotion. Men don't cry. Um, you know, just suppressing a lot of their emotional availability. They don't know how to regulate their emotions. So that's why it's almost, it almost seems like it's so much harder for Arab marriages to 
come off like they're perfectly happy and stuff, which I personally do not think there is anyone in this world that's perfectly happy. But I do believe that there is a happy medium where everybody can get along. There's good communication. There's love. There's respect. And that's that's a normal marriage. You know, it's no marriage is going to be happy 24-7. But I do feel like Arab men have a harder time showing emotion. A lot of our like older generation grew up like not helping our moms out. They didn't help raise us. They didn't, the moms, you know, did everything. So they kind of grew up that way. And it takes a minute to kind of ease them into like seeing what your emotional needs are and paying attention to your vibes and your moods and kind of getting, you know, used to each other. Um, I don't know. I hope this kind of answers your question and I hope you do get a lot of comments because I know this subject is going to like kind of stir up like a lot on the internet. Just don't believe everything you see on the internet. Influencers are only letting you see what they want you to see. Um, so just keep that in mind.